Hello Internet! It's time for another video where I make a piece of laser cut geekery. Today I am making a wall clock with the Sheikah Eye motif from Legend of Zelda. This symbol has been in the Zelda franchise for a good long while, but it's especially significant in Breath of the Wild, which is where I took direct inspiration for this clock design. Now I say clock, but it's more accurate to say two clocks, as I'm going to be making two of these, each with a different color combo, but the laser cutting and the etching process is the exact same for both, so we'll start with that. The back piece is cut from one quarter inch wood, so it's sturdier. The bulk of the design here is raster etched onto the surface, but after that I go back over it with vector drawn lines. These are to outline the placement of the second layer pieces that I'll be cutting next. Speaking of which, on to the thinner wood. Now a common problem with plywood, especially the thinner stuff like this one eighth inch wood, is that it will be warped. This stuff is not flat. And that's kind of annoying sometimes. So I've got these guys, which are neodymium magnets. Like three of them in a stack here. The more of them you've got, the more powerful they are. You know, magnets. And what I do is I take these lovely little guys. Look at that. Holds it down. And it's nice. I've got a whole bunch of them laying around here. The honeycomb base is made of metal, so the magnet pinches the wood flush against it. The only trick, of course, is making sure that they are not going to be in the way of the laser, since it can't cut through a stack of metal magnets. But since what I'm doing here is a circle, it isn't going to cause too much trouble, so we're good. So now we're going to move this guy and make sure we're lined up properly, which I can do with my lovely little keyboard. Move it around, and in my software the P key traces the perimeter, so this shows me how much space this cut is gonna need. And I can adjust it until it's in a good place. So now I'm doing the etch and then the cut for the thinner wood. These pieces will be made of contrasting color and eventually glued on top of the base piece that I cut first. Moving on to the sanding with a radial hand sander. And on to staining the base piece. I'm staining this with a lovely dark wood stain. It's Jacobean? Jacobian? I have no idea, but it's dark brown, so there, dark brown. The outer ring, Sheikah Eye, and the other little bits are going to stay natural wood color for contrast, so I'm going straight to polyurethane coat here. I always use a foam brush, I've just found it's the best way to apply both the stain and the poly. The numbers have got a lot of the etched recessed areas that act like a sponge with the poly, so I kind of smoosh the brush down into the surface and squeeze the poly out onto the numbers. Time skip ahead, and the base piece has dried overnight. For any larger etched areas, I pay extra attention to make sure the poly fills everything. I'm back at the sanding bench to address the higher pieces again. The poly has dried. I stick a higher grit sanding pad onto the radial hand sander and go for it. I wipe off and blow off all of the sanding dust to make sure the surface is free of particulate matter before applying the second coat of poly. The first coat filled in all of the tiny pores in the wood's surface, and then sanding smoothed out the top of the poly, but it's also left it super scuffed looking. The second coat of poly will give it a really nice smooth shine, but it's important to use slow controlled strokes with the foam brush. I can be a lot more haphazard with the first coat, but the second one is way more delicate. And now to do the same with the back piece. This guy got sanded too, I just forgot to record that part. Time skip! Poly is dry and the surface is wonderfully shiny. Time to glue everything together. Wood glue around the ring, spreading it smooth with a toothpick. As noted earlier, the thinner wood wasn't super flat, and it doesn't want to sit flat now either. I broke out these little clamps to hold the whole thing flush while the glue sets. I elevated it with the can of poly so that I can keep working on it without worrying about upsetting the clips. The numbers were cut from quarter inch thick wood, so they're twice as thick as the second level ring detail. This means that they sit perfectly inside these little opening cuts here, but they stick out twice as tall. Gluing on the rest of the details. These little guys are fabric weights. Basically they're little bean bags filled with like buckshot balls to give them weight. Glue done! Teeny bit of a time skip for things to set and clamp removal. Yay! Shiny! Now time to begin the experimental phase that I will later regret. Yay! So I've got this glow-in-the-dark powder stuff. It's intended to be mixed with resin, but as I got to this point in the build, I remembered it. 
and decided I wanted to take a crack at making the line details around the eye pop a bit. Since the back piece is such a dark stain, they kind of fade into the background, and I wasn't super keen on that. In Birth of the Wild, a lot of these line details glow blue, so why not try making it glow blue? First, I wanted to mask off the lines, and this was another brilliant experiment that will go horribly wrong. Rubber masking gum! So this stuff is designed and intended to be used when doing watercoloring. You paint this blue liquid onto the paper, and it dries into a thin film of rubber, which you can later peel off. Rubber sticks to paper a lot better than it sticks to a polyurethane surface, but I applied several coats and built up enough of it that I was satisfied that I had successfully masked off the areas that I didn't want to glow. Truth is, I probably should have applied a lot more coats of the rubber stuff, and that might have worked better. So with it all masked off, I took some blue glow-in-the-dark paint that I already had, which barely glowed, and I mixed it with the glow-in-the-dark powder that barely glows, and I figured that if you took two glowy compounds and kind of glow and mixed them together, you'd get more glow. Right? Eh-ish? So I put on the paint powder mixture and let it dry, and then I did another coat. The powder made it kind of chunky, and I can't say that I like it. Finally, it came time to remove the rubber masking, and that didn't go as smoothly as I would have hoped either. I did get it all off, so in the end it was fine, it just took a lot of time. It was a bit thin, so it broke up a lot. I think if the rubber had been thicker, it would have removed in much more continuous masses and less tiny stringy bits, but of course it was never intended to be used like this, so it was kind of a shot in the dark from the start. So like I said at the beginning, I did two of these clocks. So this is the beginning of version 2. Basically, I really wanted those lines and circle details on the back piece to stick out more, and making them glow was obviously not working. So version 2 has the back piece being a natural wood color and the details being in color. I'll start off by saying that it didn't occur to me until the very end that I had gone with the wrong color, at which point I face palmed, groaned, and decided to just live with it. Basically, my mind was thinking, light color goes with red colored eye motif, perfect! It was later that I realized that the reason that my brain was thinking of the eye in red was actually thinking of the Yiga clan, which uses the eye just upside down and in red. So really, I probably should have gone with like a light blue for the secondary color, but well, whatever, too late. Anyways, this is all the same stuff you saw before. After the paint had dried, I did a coat of poly on top of that, and the natural wood stuff went through the same poly, sand, poly again process that the light wood base did before. Here you can see me assembling the clock mechanism part, but there's nothing too special about that, and I've gone over that in other videos, so if you honestly care, you can always find one of those. And here they are! Two different takes on the Sheikah Eye from Legend of Zelda. The blue glow-in-the-dark stuff only glows under a black light, and it was a huge amount of extra effort and time, so I'm really not planning on bothering to do that again. I'm offering these guys on my Etsy shop, but without the glow paint process, because really, it's, it's not worth it. Also, I'm offering them in blue, since I think that would be a better match, but truth is, I kind of really like it in red. It really pops, so despite the whole Yiga clan thing, I do like the clock, and I currently have it hanging on the wall in my bathroom. Several things didn't go to plan, but I got to experiment with some different things, and I learned quite a bit, so that's always good. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, share it. That always helps a ton. And if you've got any questions or comments, feel free to throw them down in the comments below. You can check out my channel for other videos and my Etsy shop for other neat stuff that I make. I hope you have a wonderful day, and don't forget to be awesome. Bye bye